that first episode seems so long ago and if you have stayed with us ever since that first episode then thank you so much i love you and you'll know that we talked about the early history of the line from the moment it was built all the way to when it was closed by vr but there is a lot more to that story namely what happened after that but there's only so much you can fit into one episode so this is where i'm going to change that for we are not going to talk about the line from alton to winchester we're going to talk about the creation of the line we now know as the Watercrest Line. Closure of the line was originally proposed in the 1965 Beaching Report. A thousand objections to the closure were received by the Transport Users Consultative Committee and the public inquiry was held at Allsford in 1968. British Railways stated that annual earnings were £50,000, expenses were £70,000 and approximately £65,000 was needed to be spent on the track renewals. This meant the line was not economically viable for them. Protesters continued to campaign to keep the line citing that increased housing development in the area meant that there would be an increased need for the line. On the 1st of December 1972, the government announced that the railway would be closed, with the final day of service on Sunday the 4th of February 1973. A good number of enthusiasts turned out to ride over the full length of the line for the final time, including several who would later volunteer and work the line themselves. The first preservation group was the Midhance Railway Limited, formed in 1972. In May 1973, the Winchester and Alton Railway Company, which was supported by the Midhance Railway Preservation Society, was formed, and Hampshire County Council agreed to pay a year's rent to British Railways to retain the railway's infrastructure as it was. This was generously extended by the council until the Winchester and Alton Railway Company were able to purchase the line themselves. A share offer in May 1975, which aimed to save the entire 17 mile long route from Winchester Junction to Alton, sadly failed to meet the minimum legal subscription. Fortunately, a second share offer, with the aim of saving the route from Alton to Allsford, was successful. This allowed for the deposit to be paid on the first three miles of the track between Allsford and Rockley. Early preservationists were still busy on the line whilst the purchase was being arranged. There were a number of trips to different parts of the country and indeed up and down the Midhance line to acquire anything that could be of use. The first steam locomotive to arrive on the line was 040 Bagnall number 2842 which arrived at Allsford from Croydon A Power Station in July 1973. The second locomotive to arrive in August 1973 was Slough Estates No. 3, a Hudswell Clark 060. Both engines saw very limited use on the Midhands Railway, but have fortunately gone on to have successful operational periods away from the line. On March 6, 1976, the last train to be worked over the line by British Railways brought four coaches and a parcel van to Allsford. Three of the coaches conveyed in the train are still in active service on the railway, namely BR Mark 1 TSOs 4549 and 4600, as well as Bully Brake number 4211. On March 21, 1977, the Winchester and Alton Railway obtained its light railway order. A few weeks later, Her Majesty's Railway Inspectorate gave approval for services to commence. The railway reopened on April 30th, 1977, running trains between Allsford and Ropley. A first-class return trip was only 70p. The opening was very successful, with full platforms and busy trains. Passenger departures left Allsford from the up platform, Platform 1, arrived at Ropley at the only platform in use at the time, which is now Platform 2. The engine ran round using the newly installed loop, 
and then took the train back to Wallsford, arriving in the down platform which is now platform 2. Passengers would then disembark and the train would be shunted, via the Winchester end of the station, into platform 1, ready for the next departure to Ropley. This created additional operational interest for both volunteers and the public, and was also the best use of the signalling equipment that was inherited at Allsford from British Railways. Opening services were hauled by Hunslet Austerity 060 No. 196, later named Errol Lonsdale, and Southern Railway N Class No. 31874. WD196 was built by the Hunslet Engine Company in 1953 for the Ministry of Defence. In 1964, it moved to the nearby Longmore Military Railway and had a starring role in the Great St. Julian's train robbery when it was filmed at Longmore in 1965. In 1970, it was bought for use at the Kenton East Sussex Railway before being purchased and moved to the Watercrest Line in 1976. It was named Errol Lonsdale in March 1978 by Major General Errol Lonsdale, Colonel Commandant of the Royal Corps of Transport from 1969 to 1974. N Class No. 31874 was the first mainline locomotive to arrive at the Watercrest Line on March 17, 1974. In its working life it was a local engine, spending time based at Guildford and Eastleigh. The overhaul of the engine was completed in the cattle dock at Allsford, and the first fire was lit on the 3rd of October 1976. In its early preserved life at the Watercrest Line, it carried the name Asna Line and Brian Fisk. Asna Line was the Spanish shipping company which sponsored the engine's move from Barry to Allsford, and Brian Fisk in recognition of the contributions of Yvonne Fisk. 31874 was a stalwart of the Watercrest Line, and its boiler was used to restore cousin new class number 31625 to mainline standard. It left the line in 2014, and is currently under overhaul at Hurston Works for use on the Swanage Railway. Ropley was developed as the engineering headquarters for the line, with the development of the main shed beginning in 1980. Up until this point, all overhaul and restoration work was completed outside. Diesel locomotives, while not the main attraction, played an important part of the early history of the railway, with the first train as a preserved line being hauled by one. Fowler arrived first, donated by GA Days of Botley, arriving at Allsford in 1976. It hauled the first MHR train to Ropley, moving a coach and two vans on the 2nd of April 1977. 07010 arrived from Southampton Docks in August 1979, where it was restored to green livery and after some use moved to the West Somerset Railway. It really is amazing to see just how far the railway came in such a short period of time in its new lease of life. A mix of generosity from sponsors, members of the public, members, shareholders and a can-do attitude from volunteers and that is something that never changed and is still valid today. If you would like to help support the Watercrest Line in this unprecedented time then please visit watercrestline.co.uk forward slash support or to donate £10 via text, text watercrest to 70085. Text costs £10 plus your standard network rate. And of course there's more to that story, but that's one for next week. Stay safe, folks. I'll see you next time for Things You Now Know.